I do believe that Intel represent the best, you know, investment opportunity in this uh, semiconductor market. And this is coming from someone that has been really negative on Intel, especially over the past, you know, five, six years. You can see that the market cap is much lower than, you know, what it used to be. Intel used to be the semiconductor company, you know, a company that had a market valuation well above 300 billion, 400 billion. And that was at a time where it essentially was like 10 times larger than NVIDIA and AMD combined. So now the tides have obviously changed. NVIDIA is now a three and a half trillion company soon. And Intel is at, at a meager 130 billion US dollar. But I think this is the opportunity because you can see that the stock is at a 52 week low. Every other company on this list, especially those in the with a bigger market capitalization, you know, the likes of ARM, Applied Material, TSMC and Nvidia are all doing much, much better. You know, they are at the 52 week highs and a lot of them are at the all time highs. The only other, you know, exception there is AMD, but don't be fooled with this because you can see that AMD, although not at the all time high anymore, it's still 80% up compared to the, you know, lows of the 52 weeks. So yeah, I think, you know, an AMD is essentially at the all time high compared to, you know, the 2021, although they broke that, you know, recently three months ago, but yeah, so everyone is doing great. Intel stock is not seeing any, you know, good return and it's essentially been stuck here for many years now. So why do I think it's a good opportunity to invest in Intel despite all the bad news? Well, if you go to this list again, this is the Q1 reported earnings uh, at 12.7 billion US dollar. And you can see that uh, I marked the three segments that I do believe are the most important, the client computing. So this is the laptop, uh, you know, the laptop CPUs and uh, GPUs and the APUs uh, also for the, you know, desktop market. Then you have the data center, the bread and butter previously for the company, and also the you know Intel Foundry service, so the manufacturing plants, the competition to TSMC, although you know they are uh, behind TSMC, but some 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 stuffs uh, kind of start to point to the picture that you know Intel might be able to turn this around. And with that in mind, with these three different segments and how they, I believe, are on the cusp of changing the foundry service, you know, getting to much better footing with the TSMC. And that's obviously going to affect the other two big segments, you know, client computing and data center. Because if this uh, Intel manufacturing uh, is getting better, you bet that, you know, this company is going to be able to produce a lot of good, you know, uh, consumer CPUs and GPUs and as well, uh, as well, you know, AP, sorry, server products that I'll talk about soon. But you can see on the consumer side, I think Intel is going to be much more competitive this year by end of the year with Arrow Lake, uh, which is a product for the, you know, CPU on the gaming side. And you're going to probably see it on the mobile side as well. Lunarek is more meant for a low power APU for mobiles, for thin, uh, thin and light uh, laptops. And I think this one is going to be really, really efficient. So I, I do expect this to, you know, see some nice wins. So this is the basis why I think that the company will perform very well on the client and computing group. And this is why I kind of projected an increase as we go on in Q2, Q3 and Q4. And there's a path for this that, you know, that I believe that I'm kind of... Uh, underestimating how well the Q4 could be. Maybe we're going to get, you know, back to the 9 billion. And that's, you know, not something that's, you know, out of play. And the company's uh, Q4 of 2021 was over 10 billion. So I could see that, you know, being possible. But let's stay with 8.3 billion. Data center as well, you know. Maybe this one is a bit optimistic. Difficult to say, but maybe 4.5 billion is more realistic, even 4 billion. But I went with 5 because I do believe that things are turning around. Uh, Intel in uh, 2022 and 2023 was really way off AMD. AMD was dominating like never seen before. But in 2024, with the with the server CPUs that you can see here, Sierra Forest that launched recently with 288 E cores, and this is a new you know strategy for Intel. So they're gonna have a less powerful, more energy efficient E core for some kind of server workloads. And then they're going to have the more, much more powerful, more uh, energy consuming Granite Rapids uh, P cores. And this is a process and, uh, you know, a system that they're going to go on watch uh, also in the next year, where they're going to have the Diamond Rapids, 
uh, which will be the successor to the successor to the P core. Uh, so successor to Grand Rapid and Clearwater Forest, which I think will definitely be the one that's maybe going to put a dent into a lot of other server options out there. And it's going to be based on Intel 18A. But let's quickly look at some headlines about, you know, the, the Sierra Forest. So this is also with the background of knowing that Intel has been shedding market share to Intel, uh, sorry, to AMD and ARM as well. And you can see that they have been gone from... Now this graph doesn't show 2016, but I think in 2016-17 time frame they had like 95-99% to 99 of the market share. Now in last year they were around 70%. 20% to AMD and 10-8% to 8 to ARM. So yeah, with that background we can see that, you know, uh, a lot of headlines, you know, uh, shatter Xenon expectations. So basically they are saying that... Uh, the, the new Sierra Forest is doing really, really well. You can also see that Serve the Home, a popular web page for servers, uh, speaking really, really well on uh, on Intel's uh, Sierra Forest. So in their conclusions, uh, they, they are not uh, you know sure, obviously, how the market will develop and you know what kind of workloads are going to be there in five years. But when you read this article, you can see that in their conclusion, they think that, you know, Inter is much more competitive now than they were last year and two years ago. And that's something I definitely agree with. And part of the reasoning is because of, you know, the Intel Foundry kind of catching up a bit to TSMC. Now they are, you know, in uh, introducing high volume production of 18A process uh, in early next year in volume production. And, uh, you know, some of those products are going to be really, really competitive. And by next year, 2026, so the year after that, they're going to even introduce, you know, the Intel 14A. And Intel 14A is going to be one hell of a node, you know. It's going to possibly take the take back the crown very, very confidently from, um, from TSMC. So I think that's very important to know. And then there's, you know, then there's uh, the... This, this line here, I think this is very important. So Gaudi 3 is the competition to NVIDIA's AI, like H100, H200, and AMD's MI300X. And they say that, you know, there's, look at how it's kind of written here. So you can see that they say Gaudi 3 is going to be launching Q2, and they're expecting larger than 500 million revenue in second half of the year. Now, you know, maybe they are becoming a bit conservative and they're, you know, maybe they're seeing actually maybe 1 billion also, more than 1 billion. So I think this will be very important for Intel. They are a bit late on the game, you know, when it comes to, when it, when it comes to data center uh, uh, GPUs, which we can see here. So you can see that NVIDIA's volume already was 48 billion last year, expected to be around 90 billion this year and maybe over 100 billion next year. AMD was a bit slower than nvidia they had five 500 million around there in 2023 expected to be anywhere between four to five billion this year maybe 10 to 12 next year but intel is kind of ramping up by late this year so they are essentially two years behind in uh, uh, nvidia and one year behind amd but if you add everything together i think you know you look at the good process know the execution that I intel keeps doing and they're gonna introduce this thing called backside power delivery which they're gonna be the first one with ahead of uh, tsmc that they are going to be the first company that uses this very important tool which you can see also in uh, uh, my video about asml i did a couple of days ago i'll link it to in the in the section down below but you can see that you know they they're gonna be the first company to access uh, this new machine uh, from ASML, and this is you know a stopper in uh, in silicon manufacturing. Once you go you know down the steps in the in the manufacturing nodes. So once you go you know you can see here in the pink with TSMC and the blue with Intel. As you go below seven nanometer or thereabouts, you are needing this ASML machines EUV. And as you go, you know, around 2 nanometer or 18, uh, 18 angstroms, that Intel called it, you're going to even start to need need uh, to use the second generation of the EUV machines. And it looks like, you know, when you read the industry that, you know, Intel is going to be kind of first out there. So I think yeah, things start to look really good. And if you look at the, if you look at the, you know, the Intel revenue, 
Um, now, remember that these three numbers there, 17, almost 19, and 21 billion, are a bit wrong because Intel, how they report now is a bit confusing. So you can see here that they reported 12.7 billion in revenue in last quarter, as you see I've written here, 12.7. But if you actually add everything together here, you know, 11.9 plus four and a half almost plus 300 million and plus yeah so it's essentially 12 billion plus uh, you know six five billion that's 17 billion way ahead of the 12.7 so where do they lose those you know additional billions where is actual the intercompany fees so uh, you know intel is buying obviously some wafers from their own foundry so intel products and altera and mobileye buy stuff from intel foundry so once you even out that kind of internal revenue and sales, that's the number you get. So in my numbers, you know, uh, this, these three numbers are more in line with the once you remove. So you have essentially to remove 400, uh, 4 billion from each. So if you remove around 4 billion, 4.5 billion from these numbers, that's my actual expectation. So my expectations, you know, if you take this number here, let's do it quickly here. So the, it would be this cell minus four four and a half billion for the internal revenue so that's actually more in line you know that would be my actual expected revenue roughly for q4 of this year and uh, i think with this revenue base intel is start to make a bit more money and uh, if you look at the historical numbers that they had i think this is really really important to look at actually look at this so intel in the, just three years and four years ago so in 2020 and 2021 had a revenue of around 80 billion annually so 20 billion quarterly so you can see that my expectations of 16 billion it's still way less than you know what it used to be just two two years ago as you can see here you know they used to have annual a quarterly revenue of 20 billion 18 and a half billion so yeah, i think uh, there, there's uh, definitely room to grow the client computing the data center will get stronger and they actually you know they're not making a whole lot of money on the data center anymore but i do expect them to to be more competitive with their new, more technical, technological, ad advantageous uh, solutions than they used to have uh, in the past two or three years. So adding everything together, I think 16 billion is possible by Q4. And actually, you know, Q4 of 2023 was 15 and a half billion. So it's just one additional billion. But the important thing here, you know, is to also, you know, what could, uh, let's say, Q4 of next year, 2025 be. I think by, by that time, if the Intel Foundry service and Intel 18A node is, is good, and I think, you know, in the data center, Intel will start to have some really, really nice sales of, you know, the Gaudi chip. So maybe Intel in next year will have 4 billion, 5 billion of sales in the AI data center as well. Essentially, these numbers until, let's say, Q2 here. So this uh, this three billion, three and a half billion of data center revenue is without any AI AI contribution. So if they sell five 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 billion of AI data center GPUs next year, that's around one to one and a half billion each quarter. You would add it to this, and you know you'll get easily to to five billion just based on that, without taking into account their sales increase from their new, you know their newest uh, best uh, Intel Xenon six series and seven series. So yeah, if you consider everything, you know, I think there's a clear path for Intel if they manage to show that the manufacturing side is getting better. And you know, I forgot to mention that of the 80 billion they used to have in revenue 2020 and the next year after that 2021, they used to make a net income of, you know, 20 billion thereabouts. Just imagine, you know, if Intel gets anywhere close to these numbers. So if you go back here, you know, company sitting at what? Company sitting at 130 billion US dollar. Imagine if they get back to around 20 billion then, you know, 20 billion <laughs> times 10 times 20, which would be way cheaper price to earnings ratio than, you know, NVIDIA. NVIDIA is at, I think, 40 or 46 or something thereabouts. So if Intel takes 20 times the earnings, 20 times 20 is like 400. So you could easily pop up, you know, three times from here. Now, that's a lot of ifs and buts but again i do believe that the client computing is gonna stabilize i do believe that the data center by latest early next year is gonna stabilize and have much higher data center revenue and i definitely think that the intel foundry service by you know by second half uh, next year or let's say early 26 is gonna be much more competitive with uh, tsmc i genuinely believe that you know 
most uh, most of the discussions that I follow online seems to point to the fact that you know Intel is much more competitive with TSMC now in 2024 and onwards than it was from 20 let's say 18 and until 2023 so yeah this is not investing advice uh, please uh, share your thoughts in the comment section and like and subscribe and see you in the next one